Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. This lecture is on micro machining. Now, you know have known uh, what is machining right and uh, we have discussed uh, a little bit about uh, what is machining additive or subtractive uh, 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 you know uh, manufacturing. Um, now, but when we talk about machining in silicon right that becomes a part of MEMS right I told you micro electromechanical systems. So, uh, if you uh, understand the terminology of what is micro machining, it is generally uh, traditionally derived uh, from a machining process such as turning and milling, laser micro machining etcetera right by, by judiciously moni uh, modification of these machines. And uh, this is the technology or basic technology to create micro components of size in the range of 10 to the power minus 6 of meters right 10 to the power minus 6 meters. So, the machining at a micro level is called micro machining ok. And the materials on a micrometer scale uh, process possesses unique properties and also we, we use micro machining technique for creating uh, micro mechanical systems based devices, integrated circuits etcetera. Uh, and finally, the micro machining is a parallel that means, you can do a parallel batch process with dozens or tens of thousands of identical elements are fabricated simultaneously on the same wafer. So, if you want to do this uh, machining technique, uh, let us take an example, so that you understand that how so many devices can be machined simultaneously ok. So, if you see the slide, um, you can see that the micro machining term is traditional like I said turning, uh, milling, laser machining right uh, at minus 6 meters uh, unique properties MEMS based devices and dozens and tens of thousands of uh, the uh, elements are fabricated. Bulk micro machining surface micro machining ok. Now, why what let us first understand this uh, term dozens to tens of thousands. So, I have a wafer ok, I have a wafer here and what I want is this kind of structure in my silicon wafer. Silicon dioxide silicon dioxide silicon dioxide and silicon. This is what I want to create. Each layer, each diaphragm here sorry, the diaphragm is here, here. This is my, this is the etched one and this is my diaphragm. Let us say this is 20 micrometers ok and this one is 480 micrometers. Assuming that the entire silicon wafer is 500 micrometers. Okay. Out of 500 micrometers, if I etch 480 micrometers, that means I am etching bulk of silicon, right. That is why it is called bulk micro machining, bulk micro machining, all right. You want to create many, many diaphragms on single wafer, this is just a cross section, okay. But if I take a wafer, no, I, I can, so I will show you how can we create, but I am just saying. So, here if, if this is the back side of the wafer and I want to create diaphragms like this. I can make many in one go and this drawing is just to uh, show it to you, but you can have hundreds of this diaphragm at the same time you can create or uh, etch right silicon wafer at this particular point to create thousands of diaphragm in one single go. How can you create this diaphragm? You can create this diaphragm either with wet etching or with dry etching. Okay. This is something that we will learn as a part of micro machining course at a later time uh, or micro machining section at a later time. So, KOH or TMAH tetramethylammonium hydroxide potassium hydroxide can be used for wet etching. The DRI consists of deep reactive ion etching where there are dry gases that are used to etch the silicon wafer. So, we can have thousands of this in one go that is what is written dozens of thousands tens of thousands of the, the structures can be created. So, as I told you the bulk micro machining is by etching bulk of the wafer, while surface micro machining is to create something by using the micro machining at the sub at the surface. So, if you want to uh, have a definition then bulk micro machining is a process that produces structures inside substrate by selective etching ok. I give an example if you want to if you have a substrate like this which is a oxidized silicon wafer and you want to create a diaphragm right 
you want to create a diaphragm which looks like like this that means selectively you need to selectively you need to etch the substrate right but by etching the bulk of the silicon material bulk of the silicon material so how you do that see it produces structures inside substrate by selective etching by selective etching etching so if you have photoresist cover in this region by performing the photolithography assuming that this is a photoresist and now everyone knows how to perform or how to use photolithography correct we spin coat the photoresist and then you soft bake it once you soft bake it you can expose with the help of uv and you have a mask either it is positive bright field mask or it's a dark field mask once you expose uh, and then you use softly uh, then you use etching right to develop the photoresist uh, or to develop the photoresist use developer then the photoresist will get developed in this region depending on type of mask here we are assuming that you have a mask which looks like this uh, you have the area like this and this one is dark and also the this surface is also dark okay and in in center you have transparent region if you have this and if you have photoresist below it right and you expose it and you develop it what you will have the photoresist uh, let us say you have substrate like this and the photoresist will stay only in this region and this region correct. So, uh, the area which is not exposed gets weaker the area which, so which is not exposed in positive photoresist gets stronger as you can see here right, but the area which is exposed gets weaker weaker and so the photo photoresist will get etched from that area. So, now if you do this and you protect this uh, area uh, in the silicon if I now uh, dip this wafer and I have to perform hard bake hard bake at 120 degree centigrade 1 minute hot plate then I dip this wafer in wet etching or dry etching material what will happen this first is I have to remove this uh, this uh, silicon dioxide silicon dioxide can be etched by dipping this wafer in buffer hydrofluoric acid if I do that the silicon dioxide layer from this region will get etched. So, what what I will have I will have silicon silicon dioxide water resist photoresist on the top right photoresist silicon dioxide silicon uh, silicon dioxide photoresist right now how can I how I have uh, etched the uh, silicon dioxide from here by dipping the wafer this wafer into BHF buffer hydrofluoric acid right. Once I have that I can dip this wafer which is my new wafer into acetone if I dip the wafer in acetone what will happen tell me after BHF of course, you need to rinse it ok. I have told you earlier that whenever you use chemical always rinse with di rinse with deionized water. Hmm. So, in this case we have to rinse it and after rinsing we dip this wafer which is this wafer into acetone. If I dip this wafer in acetone what will happen my photoresist will get stripped off correct my photoresist will get stripped off. So, what will I have then what will I have I will have oxidized silicon wafer pattern in this manner right. <coughs> okay. Now, if I etch if I dip this wafer into KOH TMH right then this is wet etching we will we'll look at the wet etching and dry etching in one of the class. So, in wet etching what will happen silicon will start etching and oxide will not get etch or it will etch at extremely low uh, etching rate compared to silicon. So, as to give us the diaphragm as you can see in this particular image 
all right. Now, how thin your diaphragm should be depends on how long you are going to edge the wafer. Okay. So, how long you are going to edge the wafer depending on that you will have your diaphragm. So, if you are removing uh, a bulk of silicon wafer using this kind of technique I am etching silicon wafer means I am, I am breaking it through it right the substance inside the substrate you see inside the substrate right this is the bulk micro machining technique. But when we talk about surface micro machining technique then a definition changes the definition says that in surface micro machining is a process that creates structure on the top of the substrate by film deposition and selective etching. So, what does that mean? Right. We will take an example, it is so easy micro machining whole lithography is super easy okay. whole patterning is easy. Let us see surface micro machining what it says creates structures on the top of the substrate. So, what is our substrate our, our favorite substrate is oxidized silicon wafer. So, we have oxidized silicon wafer here oxidized silicon wafer we call this as a SiO2 we call this a silicon this is silicon dioxide and then I will deposit let us say gold why because we are rich no we can deposit aluminum as well. Okay. Now, what we will do either gold or aluminum okay. what do you like what you like everybody will say we like gold, but you know if I directly deposit gold what will happen gold will get peeled off. The adhesiveness of the gold improves when we use chromium like this. Okay. The adhesiveness of the gold on the substrate improves when we use chromium. What is the thickness of chromium? What is the thickness of gold? The chromium of the thickness of chromium is about around 20 nanometer for gold which is about 300 nanometer okay 103 nanometer this chrome will improve the addition of the gold onto the substrate okay so whenever you will see or read any books or any literature right they will say either titanium gold or chrome gold but chrome is not biocompatible right that's why we use titanium gold hmm? so anyways but if i want to go for aluminum no worries it is uh, having it has a good addition on the uh, oxidized silicon wafer. So, assuming let us say this is aluminum okay, this is aluminum. Now, what we will do can you do anything we cannot do anything here. So, let us understand that what I want is what I want here is a cantilever okay, like this this cantilever is aluminum and you have oxidized silicon substrate like this you can see I have to do that, but if I directly deposit aluminum there is no way I can I can edge like this right. So, what how surface micro machining will help ok let us see. What I will do is I will deposit I will deposit zinc oxide ok I will deposit zinc oxide. Then I will pattern zinc oxide I will pattern zinc oxide SiO2 SiO2 zinc oxide and silicon ok. This is how I will pattern it after patterning it the next step that I will do uh, how to pattern it you know right you can spin coat photo resist then you have to do soft bake then you have to load the mask how the mask will look like my mask will look like this after loading the mask what is the next step after loading the mask we will expose this wafer with the help of ultraviolet 
light we will expose the wafer with the help of ultraviolet light. So, what is what is what will expose actually we will expose the photoresist right photoresist that is coated on the wafer what is this UV ultraviolet light when I expose the wafer through uh, we using ultraviolet light through the mask what happens the unexposed region which is this region right will get stronger and the exposition will be weaker because this is positive photoresist positive photoresist right. Now, I will remove the mask and then I will dip the wafer in zinc ox uh, and develop the photoresist. When I develop the photoresist what will happen? What will happen? Because you remember the mask right. If you remember the mask we will have photoresist as I am drawing here photoresist will stay in this region right. This is your positive photoresist. Then we perform hard bake after hard bake we dip this wafer in zinc oxide agent. If I dip this wafer in zinc oxide agent what I will have if I dip this wafer in zinc oxide agent I will have this wafer alright this much is easy. So, what we have done we have deposited zinc oxide on oxidized silicon substrate and patterned it to form this particular structure. After this after this I will deposit aluminum on to this zinc oxide ok aluminum on to zinc oxide how I will deposit like this ok what is this aluminum aluminum ok. After doing that I will dip this wafer I will dip this wafer in zinc oxide agent in zinc oxide zinc oxide agent is 1 percent HCl zinc oxide agent is 1 percent HCl hydrochloric acid 1 percent HCl ok. If I dip this wafer in 1 percent HCl what will happen tell me zinc oxide will get etched, but aluminum will not get etched. So, if zinc oxide gets etched and aluminum does not get etched then what will I have I will have this wafer and I have created a cantilever here is not it I have created a aluminum cantilever. So, here zinc oxide role is to sacrifice sacrifice itself. So, that is why zinc oxide in this case is called sacrificial layer ok zinc oxide in this case is called sacrificial layer because it sacrifice itself to form the metal. Uh, cantilever. In this case our metal cantilever is aluminum. This is the bulk this is the surface micro machining we are depositing the different material on top of the substrate and etching it selectively to form structures micro machine structures because you have created you have you see here this is a hanging structure right this is a cantilever you created this cantilever with the help of silic uh, with the help of sacrificial layer and, and the process is called surface micro machining. So, I hope that with these examples you understand what is the difference between bulk micro machining and what is the difference between surface micro machining ok. So, again let us quite, quite quickly read uh, what is bulk micro machining and what is surface micro machining. Bulk micro, micro machining is a process that produces structures inside the substrate by selective etching while surface micro machining is a process that creates structures on the top of the substrate by film deposition and uh, selective etching. Now, <coughs> another term which we called aspect ratio ratio of height to lateral dimension of edge microstructures. You can see how much is the height with respect to how much is the lateral dimension all right. This is the aspect ratio and uh, then second thing called selectivity. So, ability of process to choose between the layer to remove and interleaving the remaining layer. So, how to edge selectively only this region you can see oh, and, and then not etching the other region that is called selectivity right. So, selectivity depends on the ER 1 by ER 2 right selectively etching layer 1 by layer 2. Also the etching rate right etching rate uh, is very important right certain uh, chemical would have a higher etching rate compared to other the speed at with which the process progresses is called etch rate etch profile is slope of the etch well how well the slope of this etch well is right and it is um, uh, given by N isotropy is equals to 1 minus R lateral by R vertical right. So, etch rate selectivity uh, aspect ratios uh, uh, and then edge profile these are some of the uh, some of the terms that you need to know when you are looking at the 
etching definitions. <coughs> so, now excuse me uh, let us see uh, surface background machining structure the similar thing that I have shown uh, that how to create you can see the side view is easier. So, you have uh, oxide and then you deposit a metal and then you dip you deposit you, you dip this wafer in uh, BHF then your oxide your oxide will act as a act as a sacrificial layer right acts as a sacrificial layer. So, same thing like I took example of zinc oxide in this case is silicon dioxide you can see an IF cantilevers fabricated using micro machining process and sometimes what happens is that uh, when you do this no uh, uh, this this uh, oxide will not get etched. So, what people do is they create uh, a hole in the uh, wafer ok they create a hole in the wafer that what does it mean uh, hole in the in the uh, metal ok. So, let me just show it to you how it looks like. like this. You can see through walls right these are see side view ok. So, do not get confused see see a dot 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 dots on, on this image you see lines some dots. So, that the chemical that is here there is oxide. So, the BHF will react from here, but BHF can also penetrate through the holes and react and etch the silicon dioxide. So, uh, there are ways to make sure that the cantilever is completely released from the substrate and the carving of layers put down sequential and substrate by selective etching of the sacrificial thin film to form free standing completely released thin film microstructures is called surface micro machining difficult to release a surface tension forces are greater than gravitational forces at micro scale and that is why cantilevers some cantilevers are destroyed by edge process some cantilevers gets buckled you can see this is destroyed then some cantilevers get buckled. Uh, like this one you said these are buckled and cantilever some cantilever does not get released at all as you can see here it is uh, just stick to the uh, wafer. So, there are uh, the, the optimization is a key we need to understand how the optimization should be done and then we can uh, we can continue from there right. So, let us see the next slide bulk silicon micro machining wet etching and dry etching. Uh, in now in this bulk micro machining there are two types of uh, etching techniques one is a wet etching one is a dry etching in wet etching there is a isotropic anisotropic and the anisotropic is depending on the crystal orientation while the in dry etching the anisotropicity uh, tropic uh, behavior uh, depends or properties depends on the process depend is process dependent. Uh, there are acidic etchants, there are alkaline etchants, uh, in this case there are fluorine based uh, plasmas, uh, there are BRF3, uh, XCF2 and uh, isotropic etching versus anisotropic etching. The etch rate in isotropic etching is uh, agitation and temperature sensitive, uh, difficult to control lateral and vertical etch rates while in the case of uh, anisotropic etching it is temperature sensitive but self limited by orientation and it is orientation dependent. Generally we use 100 orientation wafer silicon N type silicon P type silicon 100 uh, that is mostly used when we go for the uh, machining of the wafer. The another very important uh, point is to understand what should be the window size of the opening area. That means, that if I want to create let us say a uh, 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 diaphragm or a pit like this right in the silicon wafer how much area I should open it right. Is it exactly similar to this or it is more than this. So, let us say this is a window and this is a uh, pit right to create a pit of this width right how much uh, and this depth how much should be the window that should I open uh, in the sil in the silicon wafer on the substrate. So, then this is equation is given by this equation is given by you see the W is a final right width and uh, uh, W O is a initial one right. So, you can see W B equals to W O minus 2 uh, by cot 54.7 54.7 because the, the angle that is created in wet etching is 54.7 degree right you can see here. Hmm. 
angle that is theta is 54.17 degree 100 is the orientation which goes here and 111 is this crystal orientation. So, anisotropically edge cavity in 100 silicon with a square masking film opening oriented parallel to the 110 directions and the edge rate uh, the HNs are KOH, TMH and EDP, EDP is not uh, so often used uh, now. Cavity defined by 111 walls, slow etching planes, 100 walls uh, or floor, fast etching plane. The floor is 100 as you can see, the walls are 111 which are slow etched. Final shape of cavity depends on mass geometry and the etching time. Right? What is the geometry of the mask? How much time you etch the uh, silicon? It depends on that. And the shape of cavity can be uh, pyramid, V groove uh, or truncated pyramid. Okay? So, these are the different uh, shapes of the cavity that you can obtain with the help of the wet anisotropic etching. This is another example of the same and you can see <coughs> the edge uh, uh, you know wet etching uh, used or wet etching technique used uh, in the silicon wafer um, and there are two papers by Prempal et al from Microsystem Technologies and Juliana Johari et al. Uh, in in another journal. So, if you see the walls then there is a step that is created you see beautiful step you can, you can see here this is how the etching is done and the angle is created ok. And uh, uh, you can uh, like I said the wall which is in this direction right in this uh, the, the wall orientation right. So, uh, is for the uh, 111 uh, is the orientation of the uh, crystals and for floor it is 100. Uh, we, we if you see the another example, so we can have several examples of uh, of uh, surface as well as bulk micro machining. Uh, one can be of uh, VOC based sensors, uh, one can be of uh, another sensor that includes uh, VOC uh, bulk plus surface micro machining. So, this example of bulk plus surface micro machining, we will not go into details about that. I am just giving examples that you can create several different uh, kind of sensors uh, devices using bulk and surface micro machining. I have given you a very clear example of how the cantilever can be fabricated or how we can create different diaphragms uh, in the silicon wafer using bulk and surface micro machining. So, we will stop here, uh, we will see one technique which is RI and DRI either in this uh, uh, theory class or in the TA class so that we will not miss anything. And uh, in the next class I will start uh, teaching you uh, about ECG a uh, little bit on that, uh, but more depth into the EEG how the signals are oriented and uh, uh, how we can and what is the difference in the terms of the amplitude. Uh, the how the uh, how, how what is ECOG, what is EEG, how the differences are there uh, and, and we can take it from there. Okay. So, till then you take care understand uh, a quick uh, session on the micro machining uh, like I said my machining is a technique by which you can create different structures either by etching the bulk of silicon or by depositing different layer on the top of the silicon and machining it. Right. So, if you have any questions please ask us through the NPTEL portal. Uh, I hope that slowly gradually you are getting into the uh, depth of machining techniques, um, the devices techniques, the lithography, uh, deposition techniques and now since we have the base that we have created over last several uh, lectures, now let us go into the depth of the application and let us fabricate some devices that will be used for uh, acquiring signals from the brain alright. Till then you take care, I will see you next class, cheers.